a population of 15,175 was spread over the 50 square kilometer Kuyo Island, which is defined by a rocky terrain with numerous hills. Three of these hills are the Aguado in Igabas, Kayamamis in Lokbuan, and Bonbon in Rizal. In 2010, the total population of Kuyu Island was 21,847, that of the whole Kuyu Archipelago, 46,000. The Kuyonon language is accentuated by the pepet sound, the stress combined with the terminal glottal stop and contains monosyllabic word forms like kot, touch something, sot, go into, put, um, suffocate, bell, get, book, hair, and bag, loincloth. There is neither a Kuyonon grammar nor dictionary, although a few prayer books have been written in the language. Kuyonons originated genetically and linguistically from Panay Island in the central Philippines since 1250 AD, but they have Malayan roots from the Banhar Masin and Borneo Island 1000 years ago. During the Spanish colonization in the Philippines, Kuyo was one of the territories of Palawan that had the strongest Spanish presence because they were among the first Filipinos to be colonized by the Spaniards. In 1571, the Spanish conquistador Miguel Lopez de Legazpi arrived in Cuyo and established a Spanish settlement. So dahil um, kinolonize tayo ng Spanish, um, nagkaroon ng profound and lasting impact ang kanilang culture and society and kanilang way of life sa atin. Kasama na dito ang introduction of Christianity. One of the most significant impacts of Spanish colonization was the introduction of Christianity. Spanish missionaries primarily, primarily Franciscans began converting the Cuyonan people to Catholicism. This resulted in the establishment of Catholic church churches and the integration of Christian religious practices into Cuyonan life. So, umaba din ang kanilang um, beliefs and practices. Dahil sa conversion to Christianity, um, nagled ito sa abandonment ng uh, traditional animistic beliefs and practices sa Cuyonan people. Na-adapt nila ang Christian religious rituals and practices na nag-continue na maging central part ng Cuyonan culture hanggang ngayon. Kasama na dito ang language and education. Dahil sa pag-introduce sa atin ng mga Espanyol ng kanilang lingwahe, um, na-influensyahan din ang uh, Cuyonon language. Uh, maraming Cuyonon ang nagsimulang mag magsalita ng Espanyol and nagamit ang Espanyol sa, sa edukasyon. At ito ay nagkaroon ng um, mahabang impact sa Cuyonon language and culture. So, Cuyonons are an ethnic group native to the Cuyo Islands, which are part of the province of Palawan and the Philippines. Their history is closely tied to the history of the islands they inhabit. So, ito po ang brief overview ng history ng Cuyonons. Um, during the pre-colonial period, um, bago dumating ang mga Espanyol um, sa Pilipinas, ang Cuyo Island ay inhabited by the Cuyonon people. May sarili po sila. Distinct culture, language, and way of life. Ang um, Cuyonon language, also known as Cuyonon, is a Visayan language with influences from neighboring cultures. Um, dumating sa Pilipinas, kasama na sa Cuyo, ang mga Spanish colonizers no 16th century. Dahil sa influensya ng um, is mga Espanyol, um, nagled ito sa malaking um, changes sa culture and way of life ng mga Cuyonons. Na introduce sila sa Christianity and Spanish customs and traditions na naging part na ng kanilang daily lives. So, after the Spanish-American War and the subsequent American colonization of the Philippines, ang Cuyo Islands, katulad ng um, Um, ng, bu, uh, ng ibang bansa ay nag ay naging under sa American rule. 
This period introduced new changes sa Koyunon culture and society. Noong um, World War II naman, ang Koyo Islands ay naging ay inoccupied ng Japanese forces. Itong period na ito ay nagbigay na naman ng malaking um, challenges and hardships sa mga Koyunon people as it did for many Filipinos. After World War II and maging independent ang Pilipinas noong 1946, ang mga Koyunon, katulad ng mga ibang Pilipino, um, continued to adapt to changing political and cultural landscapes. They also played a role in the nation's efforts to rebuild and develop. So ngayon, ang mga Koyunon ay pinagpapatuloy ang kanilang pag-preserve ng kanilang unique culture and language kahit na may impluensya ng modernization and globalization. Um, kilala sila sa kanilang fishing and farming traditions uh, and ang kanilang um, communities are centered around the Kuyo Islands. Um, ang tourism ay uh, isa ding um, naging importante um, part ng kanilang local economy dahil sa mga bisita na na-attract sa natural beauty ng kailang kanilang isla. Um, so, sabi dito, ang um, Kuyonons ay consider as the elite class um, among the hierarchy of the natives who live in Palapal. So, magbibigay tayo ng mga um, um, factors na mag, uh, magsusupport ng si, um, statement na to. So, unang factor ay ang uh, historical factor. Um, the Koyunon people were among the first in Palawan to be exposed to Spanish colonial influence. This exposure to Spanish culture and language could have led to the perception of the Koyunons as more civilized or privileged in the eyes of the colonizers. So, next ang um, economic factors. Um, the Koyo Islands, where the Koyunons um, predominantly reside, have historically been economically active due to their proximity to the sea and the abundant marine resources. Um, fishing and trading could have contributed to a relatively higher standard of living compared to some other indigenous groups in Palawan. So next, um, urbanization. Um, the Koyo town around Koyo Island is one of the more developed and urbanized areas in the province of Palawan. Urban centers tend to attract economic activity and educational institutions which can contribute to the perception of an elite class. So last ang um, representation. Historically, Koyonons may have been more represented in local government and administrati- administrative positions which can contribute to the perception of them being part of the elite class. So, it's important to note that these factors can be complex and intertwined. The perception of the nuns as an elite class is a historical and cultural perspective that has evolved over time. However, the concept of an elite class within indigenous communities is subjective and should be considered in the context of the specific region, period, and social dynamics in question. Different indigenous groups and communities in Palawan have their own unique histories and roles in the region. I would like to share a Kuyuno song which I believe is reflective of the topic assigned to me. I will first explain the translation of the Kuyu March before I play the song. In the first stanza, it says that there is one island in the province of Palawan named Kuyo and the locals are honored to have it known by everybody, especially those who are part of this locality. This island has been and is loved by everyone. It is the first island in Palawan which was influenced by the Spaniards, which has its fort with church inside and it has been the capital of Palawan. The last stanza reflects the promise of its constituents that they will never forget Cuyo, 
Rather, it will be loved by its youth. It will always be in their minds and hearts and that they will continually pray for God's blessings and graces for the Kuyo community. As we play the video, we can see different clips and each of them can be found on Kuyo or it talks about Kuyo. Number one is the blue waters. The beautiful scenery, the Bisokai Island to be exact, reflects the beauty of nature in Kuyo. Next is the Fort of Kuyo. The marker shows how old the fort was. It was built about 1680 by the Recollect Augustinians according to the plans and under the supervision of Reverend Juan de San Severo, Augustinian Recollect. The fort made of stone and mortar was square in form with four bastions. This is where the opening activities of the celebration of the 400 years of Christianity in Palawan was held. The image of St. Augustine, the patron saint of the parish in Cuyo. The church is inside the fort. The convent, also inside the fort, is where the priest resides. And there is a rooftop where anyone can go and see the scenic beauty of the island. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Ako nga po pala si Kenneth RJD Carrera ang nag-iisang taga-puerto sa grupong ito. Ngayon, ako ay magtuturo kung saan nga ba natin matatagpuan ang Kuyunon People sa Palawan. Handa na ba kayo? Unang-una sa ating listahan ang Kuyu Island. Ito ang pinakamalaki at pinakasikat na isla sa Kuyu Archipelago. Ito ay matatagpuan sa Sulusi, sa palagitan ng Palawan at Panay Island. Ang isla ay puno ng magagandang tanawin at iba't ibang uri ng flora and fauna. Ang bayan ng Kuyo kung saan ito ang cultural center ng Kuyo Archipelago ay matatagpuan rin sa Kuyo Island. Ang Kuyo Island ay isa lamang sa mga napakaraming lugar sa Kuyo Archipelago kung saan matatagpuan ang mga Kuyo nun. 
Ang mga sumusunod na lugar ay ilan lamang sa barangay sa Cuyo Archipelago na kinababahayan at tinitirahan ng mga Cuyo nun. Narito ang poblasyon, ang main at sentral na barangay sa Cuyo Town. Ang Agutaya na isa ring party ng Cuyo Archipelago. Narito rin ang Kapunayan, Makutunaw, Takbubok, Tabunan, Manamok, Tengatenga, Lukbuan na isang barangay sa Cuyo Island na isa ring party ng municipality ng Magsaysay. Nasa inyong harapan ang isang municipal level linguistic map of Palawan according to the 2000 census of population and housing na pinublish ng National Statistics Office na kilala ngayon bilang Philippines Statistics Authority. Makikita natin sa imaheng ito na ang mga tag nagsasalita ng kuyunon ay makikita lang mang natin sa upper na part ng Palawan at ilan sa mga isla. Ngunit dapat nating isipin na ang datos na ito ay nanggaling pa sa taong 2000. Sa pagpasok ng mga bagong teknolohiya, pag-usad ng panahon, ay umusad din ang pagkakaroon ng maraming oportunidad para sa ating mga kababayang kuyo nun. Sila ay nakipagsipalaran, sila ay naghanap ng trabaho upang ma-improve ang kanilang mga buhay. Kaya ngayon, ang ating mga kapwa kuyo nun ay matatagpuan na sa iba't ibang parte ng Palawan at hindi lamang sa Palawan ngunit sa buong mundo. Ayon sa isang datos noong 2015, meron ng 240,000 na kuyo nun. Sila ay nakakalat sa buong mundo, hindi lamang sa Palawan. Ngunit, 85% sa kanila ay nakatira pa rin sa probinsya ng Palawan. Dito na nagtatapos ang aking report. Muli, ako nga po pala si Kenneth RJD Carrera, ang nag-iisang tagapuerto sa grupong ito. Ngayon, tayo ay dumako na sa pamumuhay ng mga kuyo nun. Okay, so now we're going on the mode of subsistence of Koyonon. So the first one that we have is the agriculture. So this is the island's main occupation. So the Koyonon system of planting upland rice and other produce employ long fallow and short fallow methods. To augment within agriculture, the Koyonon practice agroforestry by planting edible trees such as coconut, banana, mango, cashew, jackfruit, avocado, coffee, tamarind, sorso, uh, pomegranate, papaya, jackfruit, and citrus. So like what we uh, read in this uh, slide, we have the long follow and short follow methods. That means, uh, merong mga crops na tinatanim for long term. And meron din mga crops na tinatanim for the short term. So, uh, like let's say, umaabot na uh, six months and above or like one year and above yung long term natin and sa short term naman maybe it's three months or four months is pwede nang maharvest yung isang crop so most likely talaga yung main main na crop dito sa ating uh, mga kapala, as dito sa Palawan sa ating mga kabayan is yung uh, rice yung rice okay um, kasi uh, ito talaga yung uh, madaling Itanim, I mean, mas ano siya, eh, kumaga mas kailangan, mas kailangan natin. Rice is basic needs, basic need natin siya, kasi uh, due to our culture, we love rice, we eat, hindi, hindi, hindi kumbato ang meal natin if walang rice. So it's like, nasana tayo na may rice. So that's why vast yung, uh, vast yung pagtanim ng rice dito sa Palawan, kasi it's, it's one of our basic needs. It's the, it's part of our culture na may rice tayo and hindi yan mawawala. So, you know, aside from that, we have also the uh, trees such as the coconut, banana, mango, cashew, jackfruit. So, most likely dito is yung pinakomon is yung cashew. So, everywhere dito sa Palawan, ma Palawan is makita yung cashew kasi tayo talaga yung halos maraming, uh, maraming source na ito. Marami tayong tanim na cashew. So, ang ginagawa natin dyan, in-export natin niya sa ibang lugar. And then, nakakilala tayo sa, kumbaga, nakilala tayo dahil doon. And it's a good thing. So, aside from that, we have the fishing. So, fishing is a secondary occupation naman. So, this renders enough marine foods to be marketed in Manila. So, uh, yung mga fish natin dito sa Palawan is in export or dini deliver siya sa Manila. So, makakita natin na it's very... Uh, we are rich in our uh, biodiversity. We are rich in our uh, environment, uh, in our yamang dagat. We are very rich from that. Kasi, like, 
um, even other uh, places dito sa, uh, sa ating country is sa atin kumukuha ng source or sa atin kumukuha ng mga fish so uh, should be proud of that kasi we also help our fishermen na kumita kumita sila ng maayos and they can uh, provide for their family ito naman is offshore fishing require nets, traps and hooks and lines various onshore techniques are employed to gather crab shrimp, octopus, shell, sea uh, urchin, sea cucumber, seaweed, and jellyfish. So, may require ng ating lugar na use only nets, traps, and hooks. Huwag yung mga yung, wag yung mga granada kasi if we're gonna use granada or grenade sa para makakuha tayo ng marami fishes, masisira yung ating sea, masisira yung ating ocean. So, isa rin, isa rin yung sa pinaingatan natin dito sa Palawan is ingatan ang ating sea kasi ito lang yung kumbaga bubuhay sa atin. Ito yung parang identity natin, kumbaga part ng ating culture din na part ng ating uh, kakakilanlan na mayaman, mayaman tayo sa yamang dagat. So we should be uh, we should be aware of the uh, of this kind of issues. So dapat um, kailangan natin na gawa ng action kapag may mga gantong problema. So also nire-record nila na magkaroon ng mga malaking fish, uh, malaking hole sa fishnet nila para yung makuha na fish is malalaki lang. Hindi yung mga small fish kasi kapag nakuha yung mga small fish may tendency na maubos yung mga fish sa dagat. So hindi natin pababayaan na mangyari yun. And okay, so sa onshore techniques naman, so as we can see, may mga kuya na na nangunguha ng clams, binibenta nila, so they get profit from that. So such as mga nagbibenta ng crabs, mga shrimps, octopus, shells, like like what I said, mga clams or seashells, sea urchin, um, one of our favorite is sea urchin, sea cucumber, seaweed, and jellyfish. So Jellyfish is harmful, but I don't know why some of our kababayan is selling this. And then, 50% of the 200 million fish catch from the province every year. So, okay, like, hindi naman ganun kaana, pero, yun nga. Uh, we still have 50%. 50% yung uh, nakakatch natin na mga sea creatures sa ocean. And the next thing that we have here, na another... Um, mode of a mode of subsistence is yung seaweed farming. So, bakit nga ba is yung ano? Kasi, ang seaweed farming is very common din dito sa ating mga uh, kababayan. Like, um, they really sell ito yung mga kinabubuhay nila na uh, kanilang ginagawang business na rin. So, itong seaweed or let's say lato, eh, another term lato, is makita sa northern part ng Palawan. Pero, hindi lang naman sa northern, marami din places dito. But, most likely talaga is marami kang makita nagbibenta niyan dito ng seaweed. So, Manamok is one of these small islands inhabited by a small population and with few economic activities that are mostly conventional. The major source of livelihood is seaweed, farming, and fishing. Fishing has been a major livelihood on the islands since time immemorial. So, Manamok Island is... Um, it's an island that um, maraming source ng mga lato. So, like, mga koyonons are uh, going there para manguha, and then they they sell it. May kakitaan nila yung lato. And, ayun. So, that's why it's considered as mode of subsistence. And then, seaweed farming, on the other hand, was introduced on Manamok Island around the 1980s. So, it's been, it's been decades na talaga. So, a personal communication with a local elder. So, as an alternative livelihood for fishing. So, aside those of fishing, seaweed farming yung ginagawa ng ating mga kababayang ko yun to, uh, to magkaroon ng kita or to get benefit from it, to get money or, ayun, so to get um, a nice livelihood para may ba-provide sila sa kanilang family. And, yun nga, it's very, ano kasi, it's very unique to think of kasi uh because we have the uh, healthiest environment and then we also have the um we also get the healthy uh sea creatures or like the, the sea plants and 
uh, we are rich in that. We should be proud of that. Because um, not, not all places in the country is merong merong kind of this uh, uh, merong gatong kinabubuhay. So we are unique because of that. So ayun lang. This is what the Spanish explorers found when they arrived in Alamianes Island in the 16th century. The Alamianes were a thriving commercial hub with traders from all over the world coming to buy and sell pearls, oyster shells, sea turtle shells, deer skin, and carabao horns. The Garden of Nature by a Spanish chronicler. Its residents live in relative luxury, surrounded by abundant food and natural resources. The Colombian Islands were a valuable asset to the Spanish Empire.
a dangerous job as the cliffs were high and the nests were often located in difficult to reach places. But the rewards were great as the Langana nests were very valuable. The high price of the Langana nests was due to a number of factors. First, the nests were difficult and dangerous to collect. Second, they were only available seasonally. And third, they were in high demand in China. Salangana nests were an important source of income for the people of Kuyo and Busonga. They also played an important role in the region's trade network. Imagine hanging from a rope suspended high above a rocky cliff. Below you, the waves crash against the shore. In your hand, you carry a basket. Your mission, to collect the precious Salangana nest. This was the daily re reality of the Koyunan nest harvesters in the 17th century. They would risk their lives to collect the nest of the Balinsa Sayo bird which are highly prized in China for their culinary and medicinal properties. The harvesters would either slither down the rope from the hilltop or ascend from or ascend up from below by stepping on the nodes of a bamboo trunk. It was a dangerous and grueling job, but the rewards were great. Investors would collect the nest three times between December and March with month with month long gaps in between while the birds built fresh nests. This was to ensure that the birds were not disturbed too much and the population was not depleted. Due to limited land, markets, and investment opportunities, Kuyo's marginal share in the pre-war market economy accounted for the relative lack of socio-economic differentiation and the typically egalitarian outlook. In other words, the people of Kuyo were relatively equal economically and socially. This was because there was not much land, markets, or investment opportunities on the island. People made small earnings from carpentry, basketry, mat weaving, and coconut wine gathering. Copra, a dried coconut product, was only profitable for a few large farms. However, native out migration primarily of middle class families has dramatically altered Kuyo's socio-economic trends. Middle class families are leaving Kuyo in search of better economic opportunities elsewhere. This is leading to a more unequal society with a smaller middle class and a large gap between the rich So now, we will tackle the cultural practices of Kuyo Nun group, including first their customs. Since now and then, social contact is close and frequent in Kuyo Island. The Kuyo Nun work in groups when farming, fishing, and even when accomplishing small chores like cleaning house. However, as livelihood activities demand less time than effort, Leisure as a main occupation, particularly during the post-harvest months from October to December. The folk habitually visit with their neighbors and the men often have casual drink sessions after work. Basse, the rice, wine, and tuba, since ancient times been imbibed by the Kuyunon as part of ritual feast. So, dito, sinasabi nga na the Kuyunon works in groups when farming fishing and cleaning house so um ito as a kuyo um na observe ko pa din to 
lalo na sa farming at saka fishing. So, um, in farming, simula pagkakaingin, pagtatanim ng binhi or ng palay, hanggang sa pag-aani. Um, they are working in group. So, um, nangyayari ito like sa pagkakaingin. So, sa pagkakaingin, syempre, um, dilinisin mo yung lugar kung saan ka magtatanim then susunogin mo yung mga kalat mo doon. So, sa pagsusunog ng mga kalat, uh, nagserve ito as a fertilizer din ng mga palay hanggang sa maka pamunga. So, um, they are uh, inviting other persons or even kapitbahay nila na tumulong sa kanila na magkaingin, magtanim, at saka mag-ani. So, uh, some farmers, they are invited their other uh, farmers, the other farmers, to help with them so that um, uh, there are, what will happen is that uh, they will uh, help each other vice versa. So, the one farm, uh, you invited the other farmer to help you so you will help them also in their uh, work in farm so that's uh, what Kuyunan uh, work in group during farming in fishing uh, in fishing um, uh, always na makikita na sa isang bangka there are uh, two to four uh, fishermen so um, they are helping each others to catch fish and then um, kapag pa na sila they will divide their uh, uh, divide ng mga isda equally kung ilan sila then um, choice nila ito kung ibebenta nila or um, pang ulam nila sa bahay nila but um, it shows that Kuyunun works in group and then sa cleaning house ito um, may bihira ko nalang makita so um, kasi um, most of the Kuyunun have their um, uh, patulong but before it is very uh, common na uh, cleaning house work in group pero ngayon um, kukunti na lang because of um, yun nga may mga katulong na yung yung iba um, and then um, in, uh, folk habitually visit with their neighbors and the men often have casual transition after work so ito um, nung uh, elementary pa ako um, nang, uh, nangyari ito mismo sa bahay kapit bahay namin always na kumapunta sa bahay uh, alas 5 alas 5 yung medya ayan, may kipagpuntuhan mag-aaya ng inuman pero um, they are just drinking tuba tuba ay sa uh, um, ito yung ginagawang suka pero yung suka kasi fermented na ito yung tuba is matamis pa siya. So, um, if a ferment siya, itatago siya for how many months, saka siya may suka. And then, um, in drinking, and then they visit um, their neighbors after work. So, um, nakaugalian na to ng mga kuyo nun. Um, which is, um, sa pamagitan ng work in group, in farming, fishing, cleaning house, and also visiting their neighbors after work, uh, drinking, or imbibe each other. Um, it shows that uh, social contact is close and frequent in Uyo Island, which is, um, uh, meron pa naman ako na observe na very, uh, what, uh, yung close contact is um, nakikita pa talaga which is uh, kung baga ba um, uh, buhay pa yung mga gantong gawain sa mga kuyo nun ngayon there are 
more formal and organized socials like dances where friendships and churches are pursued as well as baptisms, birthdays, and weddings. Church going is central to tradition life and the Lenten rituals became primary social events. During the yearly fiesta, village fiesta, the comedia is performed for the more affluent in their private residences and for the public in the plaza. Its production expenses are defrayed by minimal admission fees which may earn a little profit for drinks. Morning mass, talk fights, and games complete the celebrations. Although the fiesta are well attended, the means prepared are comparatively simple. Puyunan socials are generally more time consuming than expensive, but are considered obligation that promotes self esteem and group harmony. So, ito, every fiesta, uh, minsan nagkakaroon ng disco sa bayan. Um, uh, isa sa mga hindi ko makalimutan na sinabi ng lola ko um, makakapunta lang sila ng disco kapag um, uh, nakagawa sila ng mga gawaing bahay so yung ginagawa nila for the whole day bago mapunta sa disco they will uh, do all the uh, household chores na kaya nilang gawin uh, para lang payagan sila makapunta sa disco and also um, yung dances hindi lang ginagawa sa disco um, sa kerchiefs or sa paniliga or pamamanhikan baptisms, birthdays and weddings so ito yung church going yung church going ito yung pinaka sentro ng man pagbuhay ng mga kuyunan um very common sa mga kuyo nun na yun, na magsimba tuwing fiesta pero hindi lang tuwing fiesta but every Sunday may kita yung simbahan na puno pero pag ito yung church going na pag fiesta um, sobrang puno ng simbahan sa loob at sa labas maraming tao matanda man yan, uh, bata or basta wala naman sa edad yung pagsisimba pero talagang puno talaga yung simbahan which shows that um, kuyo nun um, still uh, celebrating their village fiesta um, together. Ito naman ang komedya. So, yung komedya, ito, um, isa, isang beses lang ako nakapag-nood nito when I was uh, elementary. So, ito ay pinakita nila sa plaza, sa bayan, yung uh, komedya. So, um, may bayad talaga to. So, yun nga, sinabi nila dito na yung bayad, uh, production expenses are defrayed by minimal admission fees, which may earn a little profit for drinks. Yun nga. So, um, sa mismong araw ng fiesta, morning mass, cock fights, and games, yan yung mga makikita mo doon sa bayan, sa labas ng simbahan, um, uh, after mass. So, morning mass. Yung morning mass, meron yan na ngayon. Noon, isang mass lang ata. Ngayon, meron ng first mass, second mass, third mass, uh, for the village fiesta. So, and then, ito yung cock fights. Ito yung sabong. Uh, kung sa kuyo nun, um, tawag namin is bulang. So, ito, noon, um, during the, ano lang, araw ng fiesta. Pero, um, ngayon, um, tuwing may fiesta, 10 uh, Ten days. Uh, before the fiesta and meron mga cock fights yan and then yung games yung games yung liga or hindi ko sure pero ngayon uh, kung may liga noon pero ngayon uh, yung liga very familiar sa akin yung mga games na yan basketball, volleyball, sipak takraw uh, yan yung mga very familiar sa akin ngayon but before tingin ko na ako ano yung mga tinatukoy dyan na games na during uh, village fiesta. Siguro ito yung mga uh, palarong Pinoy. Like yung 
paghuhuli ng baboy ng yung baboy na madulas then um yung tapos yung next na laro is yung um yung may premium taas ng kawayan so pagtutulungan ng mga bata na makuha yung premium nila doon sa taas ng kawayan hindi ko alam kasi kung ano yung tawag doon but um di ko sure kung ano yung tinutukoy na games dito pero kung kung games noon mga larong Pinoy na laging ginagawa noon ngayon may larong Pinoy naman pero hindi na commonly ginagawa tuwing village fiesta most commonly na ginagawa nila is yung liga and then in terms of foods um, during village fiesta maliban sa handaan sa bayan sa plaza kasi meron na yung hand, hand, handaan sa plaza Um, yung mga kanya-kanyang bahay na t- sa bayan, they are also preparing foods for their visitors from the other uh, barangays uh, para mayroong makain doon sa bahay nila kapag uh, pumunta after the mass. So, um, it shows also that uh, yung, paiging, yung pakikipag-socialize ng mga kuyo nun is uh, buhay na buhay pa din. simula noon hanggang ngayon. So, in terms of their beliefs and practices, in 1621, the missionaries of Kuyu observed that the people's indigenous belief system continued to influence their lives. They believe in Laon, meaning time, who have the first, who was the first cause. They offered ritual prayers and meals to a god of agriculture to ensure a bountiful harvest and to a god of war to ensure protection. A similar ritual was disagreed during the during which hungry spirits seem to have in, inhabited the body of the sick were appeased with the meal of pork, wine, bananas, and other foods. In such attempts to restore health, the priest banished all images and portraits from the house of the sick. So, dito, um, yung sagda, um, isang beses lang ako naka-encounter nito. Using yung isang buhay na manok, kulay puti, na buhay na manok. Um, Um, sa bahay ito mismo ginawa. Sa center ng bahay, doon kinatay ng manggagamot yung manok. Then, um, yung dugo, um, doon iniwan lang sa taas, sa gitna ng bahay, sa second floor. Iniwan lang doon yung dugo sa sahig hanggang sa matuyo. And then, um, yun, yung dugo na yun, nilagyan din doon ng rice um ng coins so ito yung ano um, yung sagda yun lang yung alam ko about sagda ito yung uh, commonly na ginagawa kapag uh, may nangyayari sa isang tao like nagkasakit bigla nang hindi alam kung anong dahilan or um, basta mga mga pangit na pangitain sa pamamahay And then, um, yun yung tumutulong. Um, hindi ko alam kung gaano kaipiktibo ito. Pero, as e ako yun nun, um, my family is ko yun nun. So, they are doing this uh, kind of practice. Um, paniniwala, nagagaling yung isang tao. Um... hindi ko din sure talaga kung gaano ka-effective ito but um, we're just doing this uh, because uh, nakasanayan na naging practices na ng mga kuyo nun yung mga gawain uh, ito yung tinatawag na sagda Any kuyo nun have Sweden farms in the mainland of Palawan After harvest time they go home to the Kuyu archipelago bringing with them many sacks of palay A short of rice and bayan from the sea The Kuyo don't have much time for rest and recreation. They spend their free time converging in the community plaza to play games like Sipa and volleyball, to chat, to share life experiences, to compose songs, and even to engage in dramatic play. 
men curt ladies with serenades. Along the shores of Puyo, wives and children wait for the male members of the family who bring home the fish catch from daily meals. The Kuyunon live, live a simple and sustainable life that re- relies on the bounty of nature. The simplicity is reflected in their favorite dish of boiled fish seasoned with salt and vinegar. So, um, dito, um, uh, very familiar sa mga kuyo nun yung, um, uh, Sweden farm or yung pagtatanim ng palay sa hindi basakan or sa hindi basang lupa or sa hindi sa tubigan. Like, um, sa to yung lupa talaga siya. So, yung mga palay na nabubuhay sa umaasa lang sa ulan, hindi sila dinidiligan. Uh, so, um, so, dito sa Sweden Farm, kaya mag-survive ng palay simula sa pagtatan- pagkatanim sa kanila hanggang sa magmunga at mani. And then, um, isa sa mga nakaugalian nila, kapag hindi sila busy sa mga gawain, they are uh, engaged, converging to the community plaza para maglaro ng SIPA. So, SIPA ito yung SIPA Takraw. Volleyball, uh, makipag-usap sa ibang kapwa ko yun nun. And then, uh, may hipa, I share yung mga experiences sa buhay. Uh, pwede din sila mag-compose sa mga songs. So, uh, as of now, marami pa po ang mga kuyunon songs na na compose na matimaan mga composers and then to engage in dramatic play doon na yung, yung sa komitya and then sa panliligaw naman in terms of panliligaw um niligawan ng mga lalaki ang mga babae sa pangaharana or serenade kinakantahan nila ito and then yung iba naman like di ba sa fishing syempre male yung may ingisda yung tatay so syempre yung asawa yung nanay pupunta sila sa tabing dagat kasama yung anak para salubungin ang asawa or ang tatay para makakuha ng isda or tulungan na bu- buhatin yung uh, isda pa uwi ng bahay to uh, para mang silbing pang ulam nila or pwede din nila itong um, ibenta and then isa sa mga uh, very uh, favorite dish na mga kuyo nun yung boiled fish seasoned with salt and vinegar hindi ko ito alam hindi ko ito hindi ko alam kung ano ito but um, isa sa mga clue ko dito is yung yung boiled fish at saka yung salt and vinegar. Tingin ko ito yung paxiw. So, yun. Um, isa sa mga paborito na mga kuyo nun na ulam. Every time na uh, may ulam silang isda galing sa or nakuha ng asawa nila. On the third day after a person's death, Relatives gathered in the dead person's house to receive his or her spirit in a ceremony called Pasaka or Pauli. As usual, a priest interceded and offered food to the dead. Centuries of evangelization and hispanization have made the Cuyunon a devoutly Christian group. Today, the fiesta of the Catholic liturgical calendar are celebrated and most Cuyunon attended Sunday Mass regularly and fulfilled the obligations expected of Catholics. The biggest fiesta, celebrated in honor of the patron San Agustin on 28th of August, features the usual Novena Mass and prayers as well as Comitia and other performances. So, um, dito, kapag may namatayan, um, unang-una sa mga uh, nakaugalian ng mga kuyo noon um, is yung bawal magwalis sa bahay ng namatayan and then ito sinasabi dito na on the third day after persons that relative gathered in the dead house to receive his or her spirit so ito um, yung term na ito uh, tinatawag siya sa kuyo noon na uh, katapusa pulaw 
um, it is um, uh, the time na uuwi ng bahay yung spirito ng namatay or yung spirit niya. And sometimes, nagpaparamdam din naman sila pag nasa bahay na sila. Paparamdam sila sa mga tao na nandoon sa bahay nila, sa bahay ng namatay. Um, isa ito sa commonly na uh, ginagawa is yung katapos sa pula or yung pasaka or pauli. Um, every time na may namamatay, it is uh, on the third day after niya mamatay. And then, um, yung uh, pinaka-fiesta talaga sa Puyo, ito yung uh, pag-celeb- pag-celebrate ng town fiesta or the village fiesta uh, during August 28. Um, dito, dito na papasok yung mga nabanggit ko na yung morning mass, yung car fights, tsaka yung games, ito nga yung But before, uh, 10 days before the fiesta, nagkakaroon ng novena mass. Uh, and then, ito yung komedya. Yung pini, uh, pini-prepare nila para showcase yung komedya uh, during the fiesta sa gabi. And then, may mga sayawan din. And then, uh, sa mga pinaperform during fiesta after uh, lunch is um, yung ati-atihan which uh, or the Purongitan Festival uh, kung saan nalagyan ng dumi yung mukha or yung katawan uh, which are sa Purongitan Purongitan, Pungit which means uh, dumi uh, pag nalagyan ng dumi sa mukha or sa katawan yung is yung mga nak- naging uh, nakaugalian or mga practices na ng mga kuyo nun every time na uh, fiesta or town fiesta. In the early years of Spanish colonization, the Visayan Islands and their inhabitants were officially called the province of Pintados, meaning painted, because of the tattoos that the people wore on their bodies. The inhabitants of Cuyo and the Colomianes include Ding Palawan Island were described as pintados as well. Men and women alike wore their hair long. The women putting it in a band atop their head. The men either doing the same or wearing it in a queue. So dito, hindi na common talaga ngayon yung tato like yung tato ng mga tao na buong katawan may tato. Unlike noon, may mga tato talaga yung mga katawan ng mga natin namin sa kuyo nun, mga ninuno ng mga kuyo nun. Um, may mga tato talaga sila. Pero ngayon, may nakita naman tayo mga tato ba? May mga tato ngayon, sometimes uh, trip lang nila magpatato. Walang meaning yung tato nila. Unlike noon, yung mga tato nila. Bawat tato nila, bawat sequence at design ng tato nila, meron kahulugan sa buhay nila. Or even, um, may mahalaga, mahalaga yun sa kanila yung ganun disenyo. Pero ngayon, um, parang wala na din masyado na papatato. Papatato na talaga, trip lang nila magpatato, ganun. So, and then, noon yung buhok nila is mahaba. So, kahit mahaba yung mga buhok nila noon, mali, mali na dahil uh, nakapusod. Ganun din sa mga lalaki, nakapusod. Or sometimes, um, Uh, tinitirintas. So, talagang malinis tignan sa paningin yung kanilang mga buhok. For clothing, the men wear the bahag or loan cloth which they want in a layered style around the waist and crotch. Over this, they might put on a patajong or barrel skirt the back hem of which could be pulled up to the front and tucked in the way so that it reached down the mid calf over the torso they wear a tight sleeve vest that open in front the women wear lost ankle length robes 
like uh, usually with colors woven into a borders but only white for morning the materials used were metrinac or abaca metrinac eh? abaca niloilo cotton or silk in various colors depending on the individual social status the men tied a brightly colored scarf with gold borders around their head as a sign of their warrior status. They wear large earrings and bracelets of gold or ivory, whereas the women wore numerous strands of finely wrought gold around their necks and wrists and a pair of earrings. So, dito sa pananamit nila, bahag at saka patajong. So, um, ngayon, wala na akong nakikita masyado na nagkasuot ng bahag. Maliba na lang pag um, sa mga ethnic dances. So, sa kalok na kapag kita, nakakita ng gano'n na yung bahag, kung ano yung mukha ng bahag. Pero yung patadyong is very common pa sa akin. Until now, ginagamit pa din siya sa mga sayaw, like um, during fiesta. Kasi during fiesta, mayroon na competition na sayaw, yung sambali. So, yung sambali, um, uh, some dancers use patadyong as their costume. So, doon may patadyong ako nakikita. Ang gamit nila yung patadyong. So, yung patadyong um, tinatak lang nila sa harap. Sa harap lang yun. Nakaipit lang yung end ng patadyong. And then, um, in wearing uh, uh, in wearing some cloth, um, there's depending in the color. And then, um, there are some specific colors, especially in uh, morning family. They were uh, with a the cloth with a white border or even a white color, pure white color of uh, cloth. And then um, uh, for the men, uh, they were uh, cloth uh, with a border of gold uh, as a sign of their uh, warrior status. Which, uh, which uh, men, um, their role is to fight if there's some uh, uh, some people that uh, want to attack them. And then um, they were uh, wear uh, large earrings. And then um, in women's, um, they uh, were uh, numerous golds on their necks and wrists. Uh, spare and also a pair of earrings so um, it shows that uh, their arts on uh, but in their arts um, they are um, using some uh, some specific colors that and um, some specific colors and um, jewelry So now, um, the indigenous Kuyunan music, literary, and performing arts. Indigenous Kuyunan music still survives in instruments such as the batong tong or the bamboo slip drum, pala, palakupaka or the stick with bamboo clappers, subing, the mouth harp or bamboo jaw harp, and the lantoy or the nose flute. So, the Tipano band, a uh, five and drum ensemble and uh, the cuerdas a string band supply background music on important social occasions they also accompany singers and render dance music like tapinondo pundo the tipano is reserved for the ati ati isinulog and komedia so here uh, meron mga banda na uh, sa kuyo ngayon na uh, they're still um performing just to preserve kung ano yung mga instruments, kung paano gamitin ang mga instruments. And then, um, especially the Tipano band, the five and drum ensemble, and the Cuerda string band, um, they are still um, alive or um, uh, still uh, performing pa din ngayon. They're still uh, recording some music. 
and then the tipano tipano is a uh, very common uh, bamboo a uh, very common uh, instrument made of bamboo uh, which is uh, used uh, in recording or in uh, yeah, atiatihan performance in sinulog and pumicha uh, serves as the background music uh, in the uh, performance so there's the traditional house of the Puyunon people the traditional settlements of the region are built along the coast. The Bahay Kubo or Nipa hat or Nipa and bamboo will typically raise above the ground with the living quarters on the second floor. A tree stone heart on the one side marks of the batalan or the kitchen. The traditional cooking pot for rice is a segment of a bamboo tube which preserves the freshness of rice better than a clay pot. A silong, a space underneath the Bahai Kubo is a storage or an enclosure for domesticated animals like pigs and chickens and the kamaling or granary stands there either as an annex or an independent structure for additional storage in the backyard. Presently, the newer and larger houses are contemporary materials. Houses use contemporary materials, mainly concrete, wood, and galvanized iron, which are sometimes combined with lighter native materials. So, noon, yung bahay lang talaga na mga kuyo noon are uh, made of, which is a bahay kubo, um, ni pahat. So, sa bahay nila, um, uh, meron ang uh, nakangat ito sa lupa. So, yung ilalim serves as the, uh, doon uh, nakatira or doon nila nilalagay yung mga alagang baboy nila, alagang manok. And then, yung kitchen is nasa tabi lang din ng pinakabahay, like nasa taas. Like, mataas siya na nakaangat sa lupa which is mata malapa din siya. Pero, hiwalay yung kitchen sa mismong bahay. And then, sa lutuan, sa kitchen, yung ginagamit nilang uh, saingan is uh, hindi kaldero, hindi din rice cooker kasi wala, din, wala pa din rice cooker noon. Meron um, clay pot or I think palayok ito. But uh, they prefer to use uh, the uh, bamboo uh, which uh, bamboo tube kung saan um, dito mas may preserve yung freshness, freshness ng kanin kahit na malamig na um, para malambot pa din yung kanin. Ito yung bamboo tube yung ginagamit ng mga boy scouts sa pagsain. And then, yung silong, yun nga yung silong, yung mga baka, ay doon nalalagay yung alaga nilang baboy or mga madok. And then, yung kamalig is hiwalay din sa mismo bahay, hiwalay din sa mismo kitchen nila or batalan. Um, dito nilalagay yung kanilang mga ani or, oh, mga ani or stocks, aling palay, mga gulay. Doon nila nilalagay ay serves as their storage uh, area or storage room. And then, ngayon, compared to yung mga bahay noon sa ngayon, malaking pagbabago na. Bihira ka na, bihira na lang makakita ng bahay na ang bahay kubo talaga. Most common is um, concrete uh, houses with concrete materials. Um, may halo lang na konting uh, native materials or lighter native materials. Uh, but, ngayon, uh, merong uh, I think buhay pa din ngayon na nakatayo pa din yung bahay noon pero wala na nakatira ngayon. Bahay ng noon na uh, may kita na meron siyang uh, batalan, meron siyang silong at kamalik. So, yun yung ang ano na sa puyo. Like yung mga traditional house nila before kaysa sa ngayon na mara, malaki na yung pagbabago ng mga bahay nila or may mga bahay simula noon hanggang sa ngayon.
May adngadlaw kanindong tanan? Indong kabes nga sultiros, dadarang kamo pabalik sa mga manggad nga kulturang kuyonon nga nakapreserba sa lika. Ako, Sir Neil Baguana Jr., indong makakatambirang sa pagpamalikid sa tang kulturang kuyonon nga padayon tanging tatalingan sa malabagdang tiyempo. Tabi-tabi, malubas ako nai. Pabisa ko. Isarang kinaugalyang ko yun nun ngayon pasubuli at yung mga gurang-gurang sa yung mga kabatan. Kung ako nga sa salit na nga ng adlaw, ay apang imatuna at yung mga bata sa pagbisa. Ay kamal na pa kun. Isara dyang pagpakita kagalangan sa yung mga kagurang-gurangan ig sa mga malam na stadadi ay napreserba ta sa malabugdang panimpo. Lalo yung katunggin ng Diyos. Lalo yung katunggin ng Diyos. Amos, tabay na na yung doko. Masaragib kita. Adin na ng biyas. Ang biyas sumaw nga gasirbing saragaban at ang mga gurang-gurang nga mga kuyunon na tungan ng tiyempo. Naisipan dang biyas nga dyan nga mamangbuat ang saragaban Tengad madalita ng buwatan, igmaga ni pasanin. Iga kasirbi pang baston kung madanlegandalan, ig kung sanday ng pipilayan. Isarang kaputol ng kawayan ng lubutan sa tenga, iging salan lang isa kabuku, agud mamana ng magasirbing pansagang sa tubig. Iga ng labeg ay kasarangan lang ng madadag at ng mga sultiros ig mga daraga ng mga manigsagup. Tapayan. Tapayan ang agasirbing tirimusan ay ang tubig na sinagub para sa pangadlaw-adlaw nga kaministiran sa pamalibalay. Igisirara dyang tirimusan ay ang ipon ay ang mga kuyunon. Ungot. Isarang daw ang niyog na yung tinga, iging kabitan ang singi-singi ay ang kawayan. Nga umaw ang agasirbing panarok sa bubon, ig panarok sa tapayan. Igang ungot nga dya ay mamandang agasirbing baso. Kaya rin naman kapi, Igagasirbing mangkuk nga beretangan sira, igmara ke pang ibang pweding gamitan iang ungot kaja. Amus, mapakinas, mapanulok kita. Ipapakilala ko kanin do ang sinaw ng gamit ang mako inon, nga nagasirbing sulu kung sanda nagapanulo. Datong arapa i Petromax pati i mga di baterya. Bastan tiri jas sa pang sira, pabalik kita lang aroman kalu jus. En, ra? Una, ang kinarakid nga daw ng nyug. Madali lang dyan buwat yun, tingad rakitarang kaministirang magparayo pa, tingad sa marapit lang atong uto, ay may makikita kita rin daw ng nyug para buwat yung sulo. Pangarwa, ang sinalsag nga kawayan. Magbul kita yung ang kawayan, nagtadta din tayo may rintik, agod madali ta na nga magdaki. Napakadaling pagburuat yun. Aragarastusan, igipiktibong gamit ang mga kuyo nun kung nagapanulo. Kung may resibing grasya sa silidi sa kadagon, ang mga kuyuno na yara nalilipat magpasalamat sa tanggi ng Diyos. Ani man nagkakatinir kita i may tungpon siya, nga kung sa din, ang upas siyang saging mamayang gagamit, igagasirbing platon. Tengad na kaugalian dati ang mga kalulululuan, nga ang upas siyang saging mamayang gagamit. Tengad, madali lang dyan i-bulun, ig kakakaminus kita pa sa oras. Tengad, darar kami ni Stiran, nga magpangugas pa i ang upas siyang saging, Katapos si gamitin ng agsirbing platon. Isarang magat nga kulturang kuyo nun ngayon di malipatan iyang mga kuyo nun ay ang randak. Kung sa din pagkatapos sa tang santos nga misa at ang mga musikiro ay nagatirim sa luang simban para magtugtog ang pasadubli pati magsaut iyang kumidya para pambang may trasagalulua ang mga agsirimba. Masipang na-presya rin dura kang presentasyon nga dya sa pagpamalikid sa itong kulturang kuyo nun. Ig sa itong mga bugtitinay nga dadi ay maray rin sa itong banwa, kabay pa na padimdam ko ang mga surubliyong kultura. Ig basipang akabalik mo sa lugar ng hindi ngalinan pag isa kang presentasyon nga dya. Matamang salamat.